إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له في ربوبيته وألوهيته وأسمائه وصفاته وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى خلفاء الراشدين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها وخلق يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him, we thank him, we glorify him, we seek his help and aid And we ask Allah to forgive us We ask Allah to protect us we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and from the sins that we commit. Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide. And whoever he causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. Wa'iyadhu billah. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. O Muslims, Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of Muharram, starting the new Hijri year, 1443 Hijri. And Muharram is one of the four sacred months. We know that there are four sacred months, Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. And the most significant event that took place in history happened on the day of Ashura, on the tenth of Muharram, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel, the children of Israel, from the brutality, from the oppression, from the injustices of Pharaoh and his helpers. That significant day, in fact, was a day that was commemorated by Quraysh itself before Islam. It was a day that they used to fast. Although they were not people of the book, 
But that day of Ashura was significant. And it was significant and commemorated by Quraysh. And the significance of that day went beyond the people of the book. So what is Ashura? Ashura is a day of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ that we have sent Moses with our signs to his people and commanded him saying take your people out of the darkness into the light and remind them of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask if you were to ask ourselves what are these days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the tafsir they say the days of Allah means the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of Allah that happened on special days, on specific days that the Israelites experience. And remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from the oppression of Pharaoh and his helpers and released them from the bondage of Pharaoh. That is a day of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a great blessing upon a people and punishes a people deservedly, that is a day of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a day to remember and a day to reflect upon the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also a day to remember the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Musa alayhi salam in the next ayah, he reminded his people of the favors and the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, فَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ أَنْجَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ that he tells them to remember the favors of Allah upon you. That he had saved you from the people of Pharaoh. And what did the people of Pharaoh used to do? يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ وَيَذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ وَيُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ That they would send the worst type of punishment upon them. They would kill the male children and save the female children. And he says, Remember those favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And so, my brothers and my sisters, the day of Ashura is that day. And when the Prophet وسلم, came to Medina, he saw the Jewish population fasting on this specific day, on the tent of Ashura, tent of Muharram, the day of Ashura. And the Prophet وسلم, asked them, Why are you fasting on this specific day? And the Prophet وسلم, actually they told him, Hada yawmun salih. نَجَّ اللَّهُ فِيهِ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلُ مِنْ عَدُوِهِمْ فَصَامَهُ مُوسَى That this is a righteous day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and his people from their enemy and Musa alayhi salam fasted on this day thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so we fasted and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, نَحْنُ وَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ That we are closer to Musa alayhi salam and more deserved to Musa alayhi salam than you all. That we are closer and more deserved and worthy of Musa alayhi salam than you are. فَصَامَهُ وَأَمَرَ بِسِيَامِهِ that the Prophet ﷺ, he fasted the day 
and he commanded the companions to fast on that day as well. So in the first year, when the Prophet ﷺ commanded to fast, it was an obligation to fast. Fasting on the day of Ashura was originally an obligation to fast until Ramadan came. And when Ramadan came and Ramadan was prescribed to fast, then the day of Ashura became a sunnah, recommended to fast. As narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أمر بالصيام يوم عشرة فلما فرد رمضان كان من شاء صام ومن شاء أفطر. That Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم ordered the Muslims to fast on the day of Ashura, and when the fasting of Ramadan was prescribed, it became a sunnah that whoever wants to fast should fast. On that day, and it is said in another hadith that there is no other day that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would fast and would urge the people to fast. That there is no other day that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was eager to fast and ordered the people to fast. And he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about the benefits of fasting that day. Siyamu yomi ashura. إني أحتسب على الله أن يكفر السنة التي قبله. That fasting on the day of Ashura, I hope that Allah will expiate the sins of the year قبله, of the year that came before it, of the past year. So the fasting on the day of Ashura, which is the tenth of Muharram, will give you a great reward from Allah Azza wa Jalla. One day of fasting, small action, huge reward. One year of expiation of sins. And according to Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, he said, expiation of sins here refers to the minor sins, not the major sins. The major sins require specific tawbah, specific repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is referring to minor sins. And towards the end of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions came to him and they said, Ya Rasulullah, innahu yawmun tu'adhimuhu al-yahudu wa nasara That, O oh Messenger of Allah, it is a day that the Jews and the Christians, they honor it. They fast on it. And we want to be different from them. They honor this day. And so the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he replied to them, فَإِذَا كَانَ الْعَامُ الْمُقْبِلْ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ سُمْنَ يَوْمَ التَّاسِعِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, that when the next year comes, by the will of Allah, we will add to it the ninth day. So we will be different from the Jews and the Christians. We will add the ninth day, the ninth of Muharram. فَلَمْ قَالَ فَلَمْ يَأْتِ الْيَوْمُ الْمُقْبِلْ حَتَّى تُوفِيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ That the next year came, and when it was time to fast, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had already passed away. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to understand that part of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to fast the ninth in addition to the tenth, or the tenth and the eleventh, to be different and to be distinct from the Jews and the Christians. And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, what happened on the day of Ashura was significant. What has happened, we would like for it to repeat itself and to continue to happen over and over if we are the worthy recipient of that. That we need to understand the gravity of this. In the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal talks about it repeatedly. The encounter between Musa alayhi salam and Pharaoh. 
The message of Musa alayhi salam represents and replicates and replicates the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the oppression of Pharaoh and his people represents the height of oppression, the height of dhulm. And it was not enough that he called himself God and forced the people to worship him, but it represents the oppression and the evils that are being perpetrated around the globe by those who are in authority. And we will look at a few verses in Quran so we will see what was done in the height of injustice and what the children of Israel were going through at the hands of Pharaoh and his helpers and his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-A'raf, وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنِ أَتَذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ that the chiefs and the leaders of Pharaoh, they were encouraging him. They were encouraging him to do something more drastic to the, to the children of Israel. So they asked him, are you going to leave Musa and his people to spread corruption on the land and to forsake you and your idols? So look at this, my dear gathering. Look at Musa alayhi salam, and it should remind you of the pattern that we have here today. This is following the same path that exists even today. That when you read the Quran, and when you look at the news, then you should see similar things, the same pattern. Are you going to leave Musa and his people to spread corruption in the land? How could someone look at Musa alayhi salam, and the message of Allah and call it corruption. Honesty, kindness, calling to what Allah loves, calling to morality, calling to truthfulness, that's corruption. But killing and worshiping idols, that's not corruption. Profiling people, that's not corruption. By worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, that's corruption and we see the same pattern today even today Muslims are being profiled because they're spreading corruption Muslim, Muslims are being named as terrorists because that they're spreading corruption worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that's corruption for them being decent in how you dress how you talk and how you uphold the truth, that's corruption. So the chiefs were asking Pharaoh, are you going to let them do this? And Pharaoh feeling powerful, and feeling that he, he could do whatever he wants, he said, That we will slaughter their children and will save their women and we will have complete dominance over them meaning we will have complete power over them and they can't do anything about it we can do whatever we want and they cannot do anything about it we can put them in concentration camps and they cannot do anything about it we can do whatever we want we can evacuate them from their own homes we can take away their land and they cannot do anything about it because no one can stop us. And we see this same pattern, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we see this same pattern happening even today. This is what Pharaoh taught and this is what the Pharaohs of today taught that they could do whatever they want and no one can stop them. And subhanallah, in the face of such mighty aggression, Bani Israel could do nothing. They saw their children being killed and slaughtered, and they could do nothing about it. And they saw their women being taken, being taken away, and they couldn't do anything about it. Now the difference is that Musa alayhi salam, he is now in their midst. 
So what is Musa going to tell them now? In the face of this declaration, Musa salam addressed them. And he said, Qala Musa liqawmihi Ista'inu billah wasbiru He told them, seek the assistance of Allah Azza wa Jal and have patience. And subhanallah, this advice is not coming from me and you. It is coming from a prophet of Allah who was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell them that, to convey that to them, to be patient and seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you have no power at this stage, you have no power to repel the evil. So what you do, you seek the assistance of Allah and then you have patience. And Musa alayhi salam continues, Inna al-arda lillahi yurithuha man yasha'u min ibadih That indeed the earth belongs to Allah. He causes to inherit it whoever he pleases from his servants. Here Musa alayhi salam is paving the way for them. And he advised them to seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient and walk the path of taqwa. Because Egypt doesn't belong to the pharaohs. None of the lands belong to any pharaohs of the land. None of the land belongs to any pharaoh of the world. It belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu yurithu may yasha. Allahu yurithu ha may yasha. Allah gives it to whomever he pleases. So Musa alayhi salam was telling his people, if you want your situation to change, right now you don't have the power to push back or to do anything about it. If you want your situation to change, you don't have the power. You don't have the power, but you still have power. You're mistaken if you think that you're defenseless and powerless. You still have power. In fact, you have the greatest power. Just please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the capacity that He has given you. Fattakullaha mastata'tum. That fear Allah to the best of your ability. Just keep your duties to Allah to the best of your, your ability. Just please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within your ability. Please Allah azza wa jal and he will make a way out, of, out for you. Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal has promised, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a promise to you and to everyone. And the promise is, وَالْعَاكِبَةُ muttaqin That the best outcome, the best success, belongs only to the righteous. The best success, the best outcome, belongs only to the righteous meaning if you're not from among the righteous then you don't deserve it so we understand that under the pressure that Bani Israel was under it was hard to be patient but at the same time they should have been better in their response to Musa salam, because they said to him Qalu, min qabli an ta'ti, that, O oh Musa, we have been experiencing this harm to us before you came to us and after you came to us. Meaning that they were fed up, that they were tired, they have no more patience, they lost it. How long will you ask us to be patient? How long do you want us to be patient? But they fail to understand that Allah Azza wa Jal only allows injustice up to a certain point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows injustice and dhulm, oppression, up to a certain point. Whether from Pharaoh or whether from anybody else who spread corruption and oppression in the land. And that certain point is determined by two things. One, the height of injustice being done by someone. And two, that those receiving the injustice and oppression, if they receive it with patience, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control, 
knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always in control, that will shorten the lifespan of the oppression. That will shorten the lifespan of the injustice and it will end. Because that injustice is supposed to do something to you and me. To extract from you and me our level of our Iman. That when your Iman is being tested and you constantly prove the strength of your Iman in Allah Azza wa Jal, then the days of any injustice will be numbered. So when they ask him, how long are we supposed to be patient? Musa alayhi salam comforted them by saying, Asa rabbukum ay yuhlika aduwakum wa yastakhlifakum fil ard. He says, perhaps Allah will destroy your enemy and will give you power and khilafah in the land. Meaning that you will succeed them and Allah will grant you power so that he will see how you will behave. It doesn't mean that we are weak now and other people are powerful and we want to exchange the roles. No, what it means is how will you behave when you have power? When you're the king, when you're the leader, when you're in authority, do you have the iman in you to do what Allah wants? Or will you be like another pharaoh? Or will you be Pharaoh-like? Because it's easy to resemble your enemy and replicate what they're doing. Will you be like Pharaoh? Or will you be like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see, okay, fine, I will give you power and see how you handle it. So if you misbehave, he will take it away from you. He took it away from Pharaoh. And the reason why we had power and we lost it is because we didn't do what Allah Azza wa Jal wants. We didn't deserve it and now we want it back. Allah says, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The best outcome, the best success belongs only to the righteous. المتقون. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among the righteous. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. Akulu kawli hadha. Fastaghfirullah li walakum. Fastaghfiruh. Inna wuhu al ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala shafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'd Ibadullah, servants of Allah We may not be able to do much about the injustices being done to Muslims across the globe To Muslims as well as, as non-Muslims wherever injustice prevail We may not be able to change it but at the same time you're able to change it and you can consider yourself part of that resistance to injustice as long as you say yes to Allah and no to shaitan as long as you uphold the command of Allah and you follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you fulfill your obligations and stay away from the prohibitions of Allah you're part of that resistance to injustice. You're part of that in, uh, resistance to injustice because of your actions right now are helping your brothers and sisters who are being oppressed all over the world. Because you decide to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you decide and you fast on the day of Ashura and you remember, you remember how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel from oppression, and you follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you're part of that resistance to injustice. And remember you're doing this so that that incident can keep repeating and wherever there is injustice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it away. Every time you raise your hand and make dua to Allah, you're part of that res resistance to injustice. 
The day of Ashura is when you'll be fasting and remember all the pharaohs around the world. All the pharaohs who are oppressing Muslims around the world. And you're part of that resistance to injustice. And always remember the beautiful lesson of Ashura for us is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would always come to the aid of his people. And we take lessons from that individually, regardless of what the struggle you are going through. Individually, whatever struggles, remember, return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek help in Allah, have patience, never lose hope, and you will see the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a community, as, a, as an ummah also, whatever the struggles globally, we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Seek his help, be patient, and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be upon us. So, as we, and another thing is, when we are going to commemorate the day of Ashura, let us remember that the day of Ashura is not about Hussein radiallahu an. The day of Ashura is about Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel. It is not about uh, it is not about Hussein radiallahu an. That's what it is, and that's the original meaning of Ashura. We need to observe and commemorate Ashura as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the companions day used to commemorate Ashura by fasting it, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Not by, not by remembering uh, Hussein and his martyrdom and repeating a mourning and sadness for the year. May Allah guide those who do that. Uh, some Muslims today, they, may Allah guide them. They would, they would hit themselves and, and inflict injuries on themselves and commemorate the day of Ashura as it, it, it is for uh, Hussein radiallahu an. Of course, he was martyred, and that was a great injustice. But the story of Ashura is about Musa alayhi salam. It was never an Islamic practice to commemorate the death of anyone. If you look at the Quran, so many prophets died. Did Allah subhanahu wa taala command us to mourn the death of any prophet? Never. If we look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he lost so many of his companions. He lost uh, he, he, his wives, sons, daughters. So many. His uncle. Did he set aside one day for the day of my uncle? Did he set aside one day for the day of the, the, the martyrs of Badr? Never. So it's not from from among the Sunnah. So when we commemorate and celebrate and we fast on the day of Ashura. We need to do it the correct way. And remember, it's about Musa alayhi salam and his people. And we follow it as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did by fasting and becoming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who learn the message of Ashura and make us of those who repel injustice all over the world. O oh Allah, make us of those who follow your book and make us of those who follow the sunnah of your prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam make us of those who are trying to repent from their sins O oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast on the day of ashura allahumma aslih ahwal al muslimin fi filistine allahumma aslih ahwal al muslimin fi kulli makan ya dhal jalali wal ikram allahumma innahum maglubun fantasir lahum ربنا افرغ عليهم صبرا وثبت قدامهم وانصرهم على القوم الكافرين اللهم مكر لهم واكفهم بما شئت ان تنصرهم فلا غالب لهم وان تخذلهم فمن ذا الذي ينصرهم من بعدك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انا نسالك الجنه وما قرب اليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك الخير ما سعى لك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله 
wala takilna ila anfusina tarfata ain wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa aqimus salah